The pacification of Manchukuo was a campaign to pacify the resistance to the newly established puppet state of Manchukuo between the anti-Japanese volunteer armies of Manchuria and later the Communist Northeast Anti-Japanese United Army and the Imperial Japanese Army and the forces of the Manchukuo government during the Second Sino-Japanese War which took place from March 1932 until 1941, which resulted in a Japanese victory. Japan seizes control. The earliest formation of large anti-Japanese partisan groups occurred in Liaoning and Kiran provinces due to the poor performance of the Fengshan army in the first month of the Japanese invasion of Manchuria and to Japan's rapid success in removing and replacing the provincial authority in Fengshan and Kiran. The provincial government of Liaoning province had fled west to Qinchao. Governor Zhang Shi remained in Mukden, but refused to cooperate with the Japanese in establishing a separatist and collaborationist government and was imprisoned. The Kwantung Army issued a proclamation on 21 September 1931 installing Colonel Kenji Doihara as mayor of Mukden. He proceeded to rule the city with the aid of an emergency committee, composed mostly of Japanese. On 23 September 1931, Lieutenant General Shikuia of the Kiran Army was invited by the Japanese to form a provisional government for Kiran Province. In Kiran, the Japanese succeeded in achieving a bloodless occupation of the capital. General Shikuia issued a proclamation on 30 September declaring the province independent of the Republic of China under protection of the Japanese army. On 24 September 1931, a provisional government was formed in Fengshan with Yuan Chin He as chairman of the Committee for the Maintenance of Peace and Order, in Harbin, General Chang Ching Hui. Also called a conference on 27 September 1931 to discuss the organization of an emergency committee of the special district, formed to achieve the secession of Harbin from China. However he was not able to act as much of the area surrounding Harbin was still held by anti-Japanese militias under Generals Ting Chao, Li Du, Feng Jianhai and others. Meanwhile, in Mukden, the Northeastern Administrative Committee, or Self-Government Guiding Board was set up on November 10, under the leadership of Yu Chung Han, a prominent elder statesman of Jiang Zulang's government, who favored the autonomy of Manchuria. After the Japanese defeated General Ma Zhashan and occupied Sitsiha on 19 November 1931, a local self-government association was established in Heilongjiang province, and General Chang Ching Hui was inaugurated as governor of the province. On 1 January 1932, after the fall of Qinchao, the independence movement made rapid progress in northern Manchuria, where Colonel Doihara was chief of special services in Harbin. General Chang Ching Hui, upon learning of the defeat of Marshal Zhang Zuliang at Qinchao, agreed to the request of the self-government guiding board at Mukden and declared the independence of Heilongjiang province on 7 January 1932. After General Ma Zhashan had been driven from Sitsiha by the Japanese in the Jiangqiao campaign he had retreated northeastward with his beaten and depleted forces and had set up his capital at Heilin. There he attempted to continue to govern Heilongjiang province. Colonel Kenji Doihara began negotiations with General Ma from his special service office at Harbin. Hoping to get him to join the new state of Manchukuo Japan was organizing. Ma continued negotiating with Doihara, while he continued to support General Ting Chao. Early resistance, militias, brotherhoods and bandits. The emergence of Chinese resistance to the Japanese occupation of Manchuria in the form of citizen militias. Peasant brotherhoods and bandit gangs was facilitated by Japan's success in rapidly destroying Jiang Zulang's government in the region. Most of the Kwantung Army's strength during November 1931 was concentrated against General Ma Zhashan in north-central Heilongjiang, and in December and early January against Jiang Zulang's remaining army in Qinchao in southwestern Liaoning. 
away from the Japanese garrisons in cities and along the railroads. Resistance units mustered openly and relatively free from molestation in late 1931 early 1932. Mellish is the frontier status of Manchuria, with endemic banditry and activities by opposing warlords led leading citizens and village authorities to form private militias for the protection of their property and land holdings even before the Japanese invasion of Manchuria. After the start of the Japanese occupation, these militias became partisan bands, often known as plain clothes, men from their lack of uniforms, and styled themselves with various names, such as the self-protection militia, anti-Japanese militia, or Chinese volunteers. One of the first such forces to form, called the Courageous Citizens Militia, had been established by November 1931 near the estuary port of Qinchao. These militias operated principally in southern Fengshan, which had half of Manchuria's population and the highest proportion of Han Chinese. Fengshan had come almost immediately under Japanese control, as most population centers in its capital of Mukden all lay along the tracks of the South Manchuria Railway in the SMR zone, which had been garrisoned by Kwantung army troops since long before the conflict. Peasant brotherhoods Peasant brotherhoods were a traditional form of mutual protection by Chinese smallholders and tenant farmer. Waves of immigrants fleeing the wars of the warlord era that ravaged north and central China came to Manchuria since 1926 at the rate of one million a year. These included many peasants belonging to the two predominant brotherhoods, the Red Spear Society and the Big Sword Society which aided the immigrants in establishing themselves and provided for protection against both bandits and rapacious landlords. The Red Spear Society was strongest in the hinterlands of Fengshan and countryside around Harbin. The Big Sword Society predominated in southeastern Kiran and adjoining parts of Fengshan. In 1927, the Big Swords had spearheaded an uprising triggered by the collapse of the prevailing Feng Piao paper currency. During the rebellion the Big Swords were respected by the peasants because they did not harm or plunder the common people, but resisted the officials of the warlord Zhang Zuolin. After the Japanese invasion, the Big Sword Society disturbed the Chiantao district in southeast Fengshan along the Korean border, and rose en masse in response to the declaration of Manchukuo on March 9, 1932. The Big Swords became the principal component of partisan resistance in this region, forming loose ties with the anti-Japanese volunteer armies. The bandit leader Lao Paifang commanded several bands of big swords in western Fengshan. The big swords in southeast Kiran were allied with Wang Dilin, and General Feng Janhai organized and trained a big sword corps of 4,000 men. The Red Spear Society groups were more widespread. Members formed important centers of resistance as the war spread out through the countryside. Red Spears frequently attacked the SMR zone from the Shenlintun and Tungfeng districts, close to Mukden and the Fushun coal mines. They were led by a young officer of the Fengshan Army, Tang Juwu. Red Spear Society units displayed extraordinary staying power in this area, almost two years after the Mukden incident. A group of 1,000 Red Spear members stormed the Tungfeng Prefecture near Mukden on June 3, 1933, long after the large volunteer armies had been defeated. However, both the Red Spear Society and the Big Sword Society were made up largely of uneducated and poorly trained peasants and had a traditionalist, quasi-religious character. Members of the Brotherhoods placed their faith in rustic magic and belief in the righteous character's heavenly reward. Big Sword members claimed that their spells made them immune to bullets. Red Spear bands were in many cases led by Buddhist monks as they went into battle, with their clothes and weapons decorated with magic inscriptions similar to that of the earlier Boxer Society. Bandits northeastern China was a poorly governed frontier area at the turn of the 20th century and banditry was endemic. 
Some were hardened criminals who pillaged for a living, others were part-time bandits, who robbed only to survive when crops failed and they could not make a living on the land. As the population of Manchuria increased through the 1920s, some newcomers became squatters, then wanderers, and then outlaws. Even the settled Fengshan province, bandits known as Hunhutsa were common along the piping Mukden Railway and in the wooded southeast of the province along the Mukden Antung Railway, near Korea. Powerful bandit gangs operated within a day's march of such major cities as Mukden and Harbin. The term, Shanlin, was often used to describe the bandits because they knew the local terrain very well. Most operated in a fairly small area and maintained the goodwill of local peasants. Government troops had great difficulty in suppressing them as would the Japanese and Manchukuo forces in later years. There was also a tradition of nationalistic banditry, dating back to the Russian invasion in July 1900 when Tsarist forces were sent to Manchuria, ostensibly to protect the Russian-owned Chinese Eastern Railway after the Boxer Rebellion. Wang Dilin who opposed both the Russians and the Qing dynasty led a major bandit force against the Russians. His career as an outlaw continued until 1917, when he agreed to join the Jilin Provincial Forces. For former bandits to join the regular army quite common in the warlord era, as the bandits formed a convenient source of new soldiers. The converse was true as well as the Fengshan army retreated from the Japanese onslaught. Thousands of soldiers deserted into the countryside to resume their former careers as bandits. During the Russo-Japanese War, many bandit groups actively cooperated with the Japanese army, providing valuable military intelligence on Russian troop movements and deployment, and assisting in the securing of supplies. After December 1931, the Japanese army began operations for the clearance of bandits into the Fengshan countryside beyond the South Manchuria Railway zone in counties west of Mukden, largely due to repeated bandit attacks, robberies and kidnappings on the Dali and Mukden trains. Fighting supported by aircraft reportedly broke up several of the bandit gangs. In consequence bandits now resented the Japanese invasion, and began retaliatory attacks against isolated Japanese communities along the Mukden Antung Railway. Hunhutsa chieftain Lao Pai Fang led several thousand followers to attack the southern portion of the SMR mainline. The Japanese garrison of Nucha Wang Cheng was encircled and attacked by 1,500 Chinese bandits under Lao Pai Fang, while other troops under his orders attacked in the Hai Cheng area. Japanese reinforcements quickly dispatched from Mukden forced Alao's retirement, but Lao Paifang re-emerged later as a volunteer army general, and was acclaimed as commander by both local peasant brotherhoods and anti-Japanese militias. Many bandits were admitted into the volunteer armies as the Japanese conquest advanced and the partisan resistance became an increasingly popular cause. Some professional bandits such as Old North Wind Zhang Haitian led their followers against Japan, but just as often continued to loot villages along the railway. Formation of the anti-Japanese volunteer armies Resistance in Harbin when General Shikuia of the Kiran Army declared the province independent of the Republic of China. Military and civil authorities in the province fractured in two, New Kirin, adherents of his regime and loyalist, Old Kirin, elements in opposition to it, the former predominated near the capital and the latter predominating in Harbin and the rugged hinterland to the north and east. Hostilities did not commence in the Harbin area until the end of January 1932, at about the same time as the January 28 incident. General Ting Chao decided to defend the city, a key hub of rail and river communications in the north, against the approach of first General Shikuia's New Kirin army and then Japanese troops. He appealed to Harbin's Chinese residents to join his railway garrison regulars and hundreds of volunteers, joined the Jilin Self-Defense Army. 
the defense of Harbin at the start of February, that rallied Harbin in the way that had already formed militias in Fengshan, convinced local authorities and leading citizens in the hinterlands of Kirin that they should resist Japan's occupation of the province and form their own bands and militia units. General Ting Cheo's beaten Jilin self-defense army retired from Harbin to the northeast down the Sungri River to join the lower Sungri garrison of General Li Du to form the nucleus of armed opposition in North Kirin. Meanwhile, in southeast Kirin Wang Dalin, a battalion commander and former bandit chieftain in the region established the Chinese People's National Salvation Army or NSA on February 8, 1932, numbering over 1,000 men at the time. Within a few months this army became a rallying point for resistance and one of the most successful of the volunteer armies. Foundation of Manchukuo with General Ting Chao defeated, Ma Zhashan agreed to defect to the new Manchukuo Imperial Army on 14 February 1932 and retained his post as governor of Heilongjiang province in exchange for cooperating with the Japanese. On February 27, 1932, General Ting Chao offered to cease hostilities, ending official Chinese resistance in Manchuria. Within days Henry Pui, Manchurian former emperor of China, deposed in 1911, was made provisional president of the independent state of Manchukuo by the resolution of an all-Manchuria convention at Mukden, whose members included General Ma Zhashan flown in from the north. The next day on March 1, the provisional Manchukuo government was established with Ma Zhashan as its minister of war. In addition to his post as provincial governor, on March 9, the state of Manchukuo was inaugurated. The Chinese government announced that not only did it not recognize the new state, but that asserted that Pui been kidnapped by the Japanese. Despite the end of official resistance with the defeat of General Ting Chao, all was not calm in Manchuria. In late February, General Wang Dilin with 1,000 militia wrecked or burned 18 bridges on the Kiran Tunhua Railway. Wang also recaptured the town of Dunhua on February 20. In March 1932, a Japanese and Manchukuo expeditionary force sent against Wang was defeated in a series of battles around the shore of Lake Jingbo losing hundreds of casualties. These battles were small in scale, with the militias using their knowledge of the local terrain to set ambushes, eventually compelling the Japanese to retreat to Harbin. That the Japanese had suffered a military defeat at the hands of a motley collection of irregular forces was a considerable political embarrassment. Japan was anxious to present Manchukuo to the world as a peaceful nation, especially as a League of Nations delegation was now investigating the situation. When the news of the victories of Wang's Chinese People's National Salvation Army spread around eastern Kirin, Hundreds of troops who had been reluctant members of the new Manchukuo Imperial Army defected to the NSA and estimates of its total strength in April rose from 4,500 to above 10,000 and possibly nearer 15,000 organized in five brigades.